Hello, Faisal. Hello, Mike. Hi, Caio. Hi, Mike. Hi, Faisal. Hi, Caio. Thank you for joining us live. So, are you an iOS developer? Yes. Uh, I am iOS developer as well as macOS developer. So, uh, okay, around worlds. three years, yeah, around three years I worked on iOS, but from last three years, I'm kind of working on macOS applications. Nice. Awesome. For how long have you been an iOS and macOS developer? So, total around seven years, uh, like, uh, Right, so you are a senior iOS developer. Um, yes, but I don't feel so. <laughs> okay. Like... <laughs> so how can we help you? Um, yes. So what basically I, I wanted to know, like, um, let's say uh, I'm kind of getting more experience now, so kind of I'm getting more responsibilities, like uh, you know, designing the app and you know, managing junior devs, uh, dividing tasks you know, and assigning to them, creating user stories and um, like kind of estimating their for setting the process. So normally not everywhere we have the big teams, but in most of the companies I have feel like, uh, I have seen like their teams are very small. So, uh, so kind of from where we should start doing this um, and, you know, like how can we make sure that uh, this process or this design won't break in future so mm -hmm. uh, um, so kind of how can we validate at the beginning how can we foresee the you know future right that's a good problem to have it means you are growing right it means you're growing as a professional getting more challenges right and that's normal we all go through it Absolutely. you know as we gain more experience we get more responsibility you know we start becoming the lead developers and leading and teaching others and as i said managing teams dividing tasks estimating you know defining a mm. process for the junior developers to follow and also deciding exactly. some high level architecture decisions you know of the for the application and you don't need to be 100 percent right you know all the time because that's impossible you know it's yeah. impossible to always be right and make always the perfect decisions. So as long as you have, you know, some flexibility, if uh, you make a decision right now and if some complications come along with it, you ha have the flexibility to change that decision quickly and cheaply and easily, you know, then you have no problems. You know, for example, defining the architecture of the application, you know. I don't believe you should define the whole architecture of the application up front because defining the architecture is an iterative process you know there will be you go through many 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 iterations you know so you shouldn't okay. have to come up with the whole architecture before starting to build the app for example because the architecture changes as well as the requirement change and Okay. It will change as you learn more about the project, as you learn more about the needs of the business, uh, as you learn more about the customers, as you learn more about the team, you know, as the team grows as well. So if you design the whole code base up front, one, it's going to take a long time. It's going to take too long. And by the time you finish, <laughs> you'll probably need to be redesigned because a lot of things will have changed, you know. The business will have changed, the requirements will change. So I recommend focusing on flexibility when making architectural decisions. Yeah. And do it in an iterative way, you know? You design a little bit of the application up front, you sit down with the junior developers, you come up with a plan for a specific feature, for example. Then you develop this feature in short iterations and you ship it to your customers, to your clients, you know, to your boss maybe. And you get feedback because you want to get feedback early. If you get early feedback, you know if you're going in the right direction. If you're not going, you know, in the right direction, you adjust, adjust as needed. It's much better than sitting down for a long time and making like these high level decisions that's gonna impact the five years of the project because we cannot, we don't know the future, right? Yeah. 
So solving problems in batches, in small batches, iterations, and shipping frequently to get early feedback from your customers, from your boss, because then this will direct what is the direction you need to go. And that's going to help you make more decisions, more informed decisions. The early feedback you get, the better. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Ad adjusting, I think, I feel is is one of the biggest skills that you need to cultivate. And this is a skill, it's not, you know, like you, you need to actively practice it, you know, especially as you as you grow as a professional and you have more responsibilities. What's going to happen there is that um, you're going to apply a bunch of legacy, you know, uh, processes from previous leadership and uh, you know, like things that you, you did you did in the past, but sometimes these things like you're gonna find out that they don't work anymore. You know, or they they block you or they slow you down. Now, this is where the adjustment, you know, comes in. Like you need to be able also to um, uh, critically think about about the process, for example. Yeah, and 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 say, okay, you know what? Like this used to work. Perhaps we can we can do better here. Adjusting is like extremely important. That's what I wanted to say. Adapting to changes. Exactly. Adapting to changes. Yes. Yes. Um, changes are a given. They will happen. Yeah. As Mike said, like something that worked in the past doesn't mean it's going to work in the future. Right. So, of course, with experience, you can make decisions much quicker. Right. The more and more experience you get, the more uh, quicker you can make decisions because you already solved this problem before, for example or you're already being exposed to a problem, you already learn how to solve a problem by reading a book, you know, by, by taking courses, and then you can come up with solutions much quicker, but even those solutions may not work 100% of the times, and you need to uh, adjust to the situation, right? If there was one final way of building software, everyone would be following it, but it really depends on the context, it depends on the team, on the challenge, on the project, on the budget, and as you grow as a professional, you need to put all of these in consideration. You know, not just the technical side, but put like the team, the the budget, the schedule, you know. And and that's where the value comes, you know, when you have those skills and you can make those decisions, that's when you're going to increase your income because all the businesses need developers that can make these kind of decisions, you know. Yeah. So you are on the right path. You are in the right direction. No, congratulations. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yes, exactly. And and asking for you know other people's uh, advice and opinions. That's absolutely you know it it proves that what Kyle just said. So yeah, but this is it. Like set set a, a good okay. expectation <laughs> that what you're going through is like it's it's the it's the norm. You know, it is. Uh, it should be like that. And yeah, you'll be fine. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah. then some, sometimes what happens, let's say uh, we're going to change something. Now we think, okay, changing this will take lots of efforts. So uh, so in order to save some time, even that design becomes even more messy. So uh, like I have felt this. Uh, so even uh, we try to, you know, follow the same design, like, and try to uh, do put some more patches like for just to save some time so in that situation uh, like uh, what we should do like should we ask for more time and you know re-architect things yeah this is again uh decision by decision you or case by case question? you need to make this these decisions right sometimes sometimes time is so crucial like we need to ship the app tomorrow because the marketing campaign is going live, you know, like there's no way to stop it. So you need to make decisions to meet that deadline regardless of what's going on, you know, and then you're going to maybe there take some tech debt, right? Which is a term where you are, you know that you're making a decision that's not optimal, that's going to be repaid in the future. You know, but it needs to be repaid. But most of the times, they are not repaid. And it yeah. starts accumulating and accumulating and accumulating. So that's why these decisions here, they need to 
they, they shouldn't be taken lightly, you know? They shouldn't just say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah it's just take that, you know? We, we fix it later. Because this later may never come, and it starts accumulating, accumulating. And over time, it's going to take much, much longer. Everything is going to, you know, get stuck. Yeah. So be careful when you make decisions like that. Like, oh, yeah, let's let's choose the shortcut right now because it may give you some quick returns in the short term, but it damages you in the long term. And if you end this game for the long term, which I think you should be, you right? know, in the game for the long term, you know, and we shouldn't make this decision like lightly. We need to really think about it because maybe something that solves our problem in the short term, it damages us in the long term. Exactly. And our career is for the long term, right? We're not here for the short term. So we need to care about the long term as well. That's why tech debt, you need to be very careful. You only need to make, you can only make this decision if you're going to repay it. If you think you cannot repay it, maybe it's better not to do it. So you need to negotiate better terms with your boss. And if they give you a task that you think that you cannot fill in the time they gave you, mm -hmm. you need to study the challenge you're trying to, to solve and come up with alternatives. Instead of going to your boss and say, no, we cannot do it. You can say, hey, we cannot do it, but we can do this, 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 or this instead and give some options, you know? If we reduce the scope of this feature, then we can do it. Makes sense? And then you don't need to compromise quality, but you compromise the scope. And over time, you deliver the feature with the quality, with everything in place, with testing, a good architecture as needed. So it's all about having a good communication, you know, having a good reputation with the business so they trust you as the specialist to make this kind of decisions. Because as you grow in your career, you will be the person calling the shots and making these kind of decisions. And they should trust you to do it. So build trust and they will come to you to ask how long it's going to take instead of telling you how long it must take. <laughs> yes, exactly. So I recommend you start reading about leadership as well. You know, if you go to our book suggestions in our website, we have a bunch of books there. They're not technical because now you're starting dealing with problems. They are not 100% technical, right? Exactly. More in the social aspect. So you need to learn those new skills. Leadership, exactly. estimating, yeah. you know, influencing people and helping, teaching, mentoring. That's what's going to get you to the next level now. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Connecting the dots in all these disciplines and topics, you know. Yeah. Makes sense? Uh, yes. Thanks. Any other questions? Oh, uh, uh, yes. So, uh, like, let's talk about testing. So, let's say, uh, you know, we are changing design. So, like, um, do you also need to, you know, add testing in such a way that, you know, when we are changing design, or uh, in that case, our tests still be valid? So, um, like, I, I don't have much experience on, uh, you know, um, uh, testing. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so in that case, um, uh, maybe uh, if we have changed changing the design, now we are you know um, we'll have to, you know, like many of the tests uh, got got failed. Now we'll have to spend uh, you know time on uh, uh, like fixing that as well. Like maybe we'll have to completely remove few of the tests. And um, so uh, I have seen like people mostly focuses on architecting. Uh, you know, mm, code instead of uh, test. So, okay. uh, what's your thoughts on uh, architecture, which is particularly for testing? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm. If you follow our channel, you know that we are big fans of testing, and we really promote testing as a practice that we believe every developer should do. Mm -hmm. We even promote test-driven development, where you're writing the test first and driving the design you know, and the implementation of your applications and components and modules from the test point of view, you know, as the test being the first client of your code. And the problem of changing the application and breaking all the tests is a known problem because it means that your tests are too coupled with the structure, you know, of the production code. Right. 
But if you practice and you learn techniques on how to decouple your tests from the structure of the app, then the test will be a tool to help you change the design. Because you can change the design and the test will validate that this system still does exactly the same thing, exactly the same behavior. We didn't break the application and it, the test should not get in the way. This is one of the desire, desired traits of a unit test, for example, is that it should be decoupled from the structure of the code and it should be coupled with the behavior of the code. Okay. Which means if you change the behavior, you should see a fitting test because now it's doing something else, right? And it should, the test should tell you, hey, there's something wrong because this function is not doing what it's supposed to. Now, it should be decoupled from the structure, which means I should be able to refactor my code and move things around and extract a big class into many classes without breaking the, the code. So it should be decoupled from the structure and coupled with the behavior. You only want the, failing, the test to fail if you broke the behavior, not if you change the structure. Exactly. Right? You so you need to design the tests with this in mind. Otherwise, they're going to get in the way. It's making sense. Yeah. Exactly. There's also no substitute. It's not It's not a substitute. Uh, like architecture is not a substitute for testing. You know, like this, these are different things. So, you know, the you're, you're testing to verify, to check that the behavior is correct. You know, like architecture is there to uh, allow you to grow uh, sustainably your design, you know? So, yeah, that's that's a, a, a different, two different notions as well. You know, so you need to learn the skills how to write the tests in this way. Because yeah. if you can, then the unit test is, is going to help you change the design yeah. rather than yeah. getting the way. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. Okay. Awesome. Any other questions? Um, so... Awesome. Okay. So that's it. Homework. Start studying, testing, and how to achieve this desired trait. Yeah. Okay, yes. Uh, I'll do that. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Faisal, for joining us. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Thanks, Gaio. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.